Hi everybody, this is David, the Timeless Runner, coming to you with another session of Yoga for Seniors, Yoga for Beginners, Yoga for Runners, hey, Yoga for You. Today I'm going to do a series of what they would call basic yoga poses, things that get you going in the morning that you can use as part of your yoga flows every day. And it's more for flexibility than for anything else. So we'll stay on that theme today. And as we stay on that theme, we're going to stay on the floor to start off with. And you should not require any kind of special equipment. I use a yoga block when I sit on the floor because it helps me with my posture. So if you can do this normally, Without a yoga block, hey, that's great. If you need to get a little extra support, correct your posture if it's gone bad over the years, then hey, use a yoga block either way. So all of our yoga sessions, we always start with a couple of deep breaths, clear the body, clear the mind, get ready for the, the session. Try to relax, focus on your breathing. As you inhale, you generally inhale through your nose. Then you can exhale either through your nose or your mouth. Again, focus on the breath. Then I'm going to switch down to the mat and sit on the mat. I'm going to put my feet by my cheekbones. And I'm going to go into a back bridge. The back bridge, you're just going to raise your hips up off the ground. Squeeze your butt cheeks together. This is a very good stretch for the Hip adductors and for your quads. So squeeze your butt cheeks together each time that breath, try and raise your hips a little higher. Again, it's a very good stretch to start the morning out with or afternoon or evening, whatever you're doing this. You want to hold it for about 20 seconds. 20 seconds is about where you'll get the maximum effect. And then we're going to move to hug our knees to our chest. Stretch out the lower back if you pull it towards your chest. Again, about 20 seconds for each one of the poses. Now we can extend one leg down, pull the other behind the knee, and kick our heel up towards the ceiling. We pull back on the quad. We'll get the stretch on the hamstring. You can reach up to the calf if you can. Just stretching this out. From here we can go into some nerve uh, flossing for the sciatic nerve if you wish. It's by, done by pushing the heel up towards the ceiling, pointing the toes downward as we lower our leg. This moves the sciatic nerve in its canal or the, the route of travel. And then we can come back and do it with the other leg. Stretching it out, pushing our heel up towards the ceiling. And you can pull back to increase the stretch on the hamstring. You can use a yoga strap if you have one. I have one here, I just didn't Put it next to me. OK, 
Okay, then we can switch into a reclining pigeon where we will put our one foot flat on the ground, put our other ankle across the knee. And we start by pushing out against the raised or elevated knee. Feel a stretch on the side. From here we can reach between our legs and lift our knee up. Feel the stretch on the outside of our, in this case, left leg. If you recline your shoulders back, you'll change the angle of the stretch. And again, we want to hold these for 15 to 20 seconds. Then put our foot back down on the ground and with our other hand, opposite hand, gently pull our knee across our body. You can hook your toes behind your knee and rotate further. If you get hold back, you'll feel the stretch on the outside of your glute. Move your IT bandages. And of course, what we do on one side, we're gonna do on the other. So I'm going, you can start by pushing away on the knee gently. We don't want to dislocate any knees. But as you hold it, you'll find that it'll start to loosen up all of the tendons and the ligaments on your hip. So you'll probably get a greater range of motion as you continue to push away at your knee. Remember to breathe all the time. Raise your knee up off the ground by putting your hands between your legs. Again, this will change the emphasis on your stretch. And we're going to then pull the knee across our body. Toes behind the opposite knee as we go for full. Try and keep your shoulders on the ground as you do this. This is going to loosen up your lower back as well as your tendons and ligaments in the hip area. While we're down here, we can again, on those back bridges, we can start to do Reverse push-ups and to stretch out the quads. This is a dynamic stretch. Earlier we held it in place. That's a static stretch. On the static stretch, you engage the muscles and don't let them release. On a dynamic stretch, you're stretching through movement. Okay, we're going to do some Cobras, where we lay on the mat and raise our shoulders up off the ground. This is going to engage the back muscles, stretch them out. And from there, you can go into a sphinx pose. You want to keep the hips on the ground as you do these. Each time you're going to put a little more arch in your back, working on spine flexibility. And then in the Sphinx Rose, you can go into the full Cobra. Again, try and keep your hips down on the ground as you do this. Increase the range of motion in your back. Okay, from there, go into a T 
tabletop position. Just your knees under your hips, hands under your shoulders. We'll do a round of cat and cow. The cat position, you arch your back up, drop your chin to your chest, and arch your back. The cow is the opposite. You lower your stomach, pinch your shoulders together, and raise your head up. So again, this is more for spine flexation. And you'll see this included in almost every yoga flow that you do. So you can do as many of these as you like. It's just a simple repetitive motion where we arch the spine hold it up there, and then relax that down. You can then move your arms a little further out, and you can start to do some kneeling hip circles, where we're just going to rotate our hips in a full circle. Kind of increase the range as you do this. Working on the lower back and the hips and reverse the direction. And warming up the tendons and the ligaments around the hips, stretching out the lower back. Here's a child's pose where we're going to Put our arms out in front of us and let our butt drop down to our calves or ankles. Get to stretch out the lower back. This is a very restful pose. A lot of the routines will start with the child's pose. And focus on your breathing. Try to relax. You walk your hands to the side to increase a side stretch. Again, holding it for about 15 to 20 seconds. And walk your hands back to the other side. Bring them back to center. Turn to that tabletop position. There are some other stretches we can do from tabletop. We can lower our shoulder down to the ground. You can either reach your side or just stick your arm straight out. Again, we're working on stretching the lower back through a twisting action. Nothing severe, but just uh, trying to Loosen the, the muscles up by stretching them. And we can go into a low lunge, which is where we put one foot up and kneel on the other. Put our hands straight up in the air and lean back. This is going to stretch the quad on the knee, on the leg that is kneeling on the ground. Our hands behind our back and push away as we lean back to increase the stretch. Some people are able to grab the foot on the leg that's on the ground. I can't, but some people can. Then we're going to kick our foot out to the side, put our hands down next to it and let the, the rear leg straighten out. Hold that for a moment. 
I'm going to take the one arm and raise it up to the sky. And you'll feel stretches on the inside of your groin on both legs. You can amplify that stretch by pushing out on the knee on the ground with your elbow as you do that. Again, a low lunge to start it off. Lean back to stretch the front of your quad. Move your hands behind your back. And push away to increase the bend in your back as well as the stretch on the front of the quad. Take your leg out to the side, put your hands there and relax your leg and let it go back. Push out to the side to stretch your groin. Raise your arm up to increase the, the stretch on the lower back. And then return to your tabletop position. Whenever you're on the mat or on the floor, you always want to roll to your side when you're going to move or get up. I do a hip stretch right now where I'm going to put my feet out, pointed out to the sides and then rotate my hips side to side. Again, this is more of a dynamic stretch for your hips. To keep everything there as loose as we can. Then I'm going to put one leg out in front. sole of one foot against the inside of the thigh on the other leg. Lean forward to stretch out the hamstring. You can have a variation on this where you can kick the leg out to the side and go forward. This is going to stretch the inside of the leg. Bring the leg back, cross over, and then with your opposite arm, hug your knee, pull your chest up towards it, and pull your knee in. And that will stretch the outside of the, the leg that is crossed over. Turn around to the side to increase the stretch. And then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So again, we start with the one foot against the inside of the thigh, stretch the hamstring. The more you lean forward, the more you will stretch that hamstring. Kick the leg out to the side to um, stretch the groin area. Return the leg to center, cross over, figure four. Hug your knee with your opposite arm. Lean forward into it and then twist to the side. And we can bring our legs back to center. Down on our back. Do a happy baby by grabbing our toes and rotating up like the babies do. Just holding it there, you'll feel the stretch in the lower back. Our feet together and then. Fall down towards the ground. Use the muscles in our legs to pull them back, not the hands. And then go into a groin stretch. Roll 
to our sides. Come back up to the standing position. I'm going to take some deep breaths just to return to where we were at the start of this routine. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, these are some basic poses that you can do every day. You don't require any special equipment. There are some that I, I will use in different combinations. As you get more experience with yoga, you realize that there are only so many poses, but you can mix them up any way you like so that you can focus on different muscle groups or different uh, areas of the body. If you like these, please click on like. If you want to see them when they first come out, I generally do one narrated video each week and I do YouTube shorts every day. And please click on subscribe. If you have any comments, anything you'd like to see, please let me know. Again, it's David, the Timeless Runner, coming to you uh, each day on YouTube. And thanks for watching.